the world, so you gotta be careful with your whey protein. So I had vegetarians and vegans tell me, well, you know, the problems with whey, and we use hemp seed, and it's just as good, and soy. No, it's not. Whey protein is loaded with growth factors for growing an animal. That's what whey protein has that soy doesn't have, that hemp doesn't have, much as these can be valuable. Egg and whey are the two best proteins, and you're crazy if you're throwing out the yolk. That is more stupid, stupid medical information to throw out the yolk. That is a mother load powerhouse of nutrition. That yolk, you should, if you're throwing anything, throw out the white and keep the yolk. But you need them both, don't throw anything. Don't throw anything. That's all powerful medicine. Powerful, powerful medicine, because an egg is a life force. It's life, it's everything that you need to be alive. It's a cell. An egg is not an, is not an egg, it's an egg cell. Do you know this? We call it an egg, but it's an egg cell. It is you, it is a cell. You're eating a cell, you're eating everything that's in a cell, and it's a big one loaded with lots of parts. So eat the egg and eat the whey, and get your protein. Uh, we've been talking about serotonin here on the radio program. You guys heard me talking about serotonin. Build your own darn serotonin. If you're on Lexapro or your Zoloft, you wanna get off of it? Wanna know somebody who's on it? Know somebody who's on it? Build your own darn serotonin. If that's a problem, and serotonin depletion may or may not be a problem. It's not always a problem. Sometimes people say it is, but if it is, you can make your own. The number one best way to make your own, well, number two best way, the number one best way to make your own serotonin is get yourself in the sun. More medical stupidity. The sun, uh, the uh, serotonin, or tryptophan and serotonin, protect your skin from the sun. And when you're out in the sun, this is when you want to make sure that you're taking in your building materials, your anti-aging, anti-breakdown nutrients when you're in the sun. The problem isn't the sun. The problem is we're breaking down. The sun is your friend if you're healthy, but it's not your friend if you're breaking down. So, upregulating, getting out in the sun is one of the best ways to make your own serotonin, but if you're wearing sunscreen, guess what? You ain't making serotonin. And you're probably not doing yourself any good if you wear sunglasses either, by the way, because there's a reaction that occurs in your brain through sunlight in your eyes. In any case, the best, second best way from a nutritional standpoint to build serotonin is to eat protein with, with carbohydrates. They say, oh my God, low carb. What's with this carb thing? Okay, this is where we're missing about carbs. You know most of your calories should come from carbs? Most of your calories. Low carb is not low carb. Low carb is low refined carb. Do not throw out the baby with the bath water when it comes to carbs. So our second, that's our third chapter, we'll talk about it now. Carbohydrates are extremely important, but there's one kind of carbohydrate that you need that's a powerful building carbohydrate. What is that? Vegetables. Vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. Eating vegetables with your protein is how you build serotonin and make your own serotonin. So if somebody is want, trying to get off Lexapro or Zoloft, wean them off of it, make sure they're getting protein and make sure that they're getting um, uh, car vegetable, vegetable carbohydrates with it and make sure they're getting out in the sun. Okay, uh, third, chapter two is essential fatty acids, essential uh, fats, and the most important of the fats are essential fatty acids. People, essential fatty acids are part of the Mighty 90 for a reason. The Mighty 90 is all the nutritional stuff, all the nutritional components that you need to build a body. You can't get everything you need from food. It isn't gonna happen. I wish it were going to happen. I wish it were gonna happen that we could get everything from food. You can't, especially when it comes to fats, because fats are unstable, which is why you need the Mighty 90. Which is why if you have a degenerative disease and you haven't given the Mighty 90 a chance, you're missing one of the most powerful, powerful healing modalities that you will ever interact with that drugs cannot even come close to touching. We'll talk about that in a second, but one of the most important components is something called essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are beyond important. I, I, I don't know how to express you how fundamentally important they are, but just to give you a couple little, flavor, a couple little ideas, you cannot grow protein without fat without essential fatty acids. If you're breaking down and you're interested in reversing the breakdown process, essential fatty acids act as what are called transcription factors. They support protein manufacturing at the genetic level. They turn on protein production at the genetic level. The problem with EFAs is they're almost impossible to get in food. Listen, these are so important that they turn on genetics, but they're almost impossible to get from food. The only way you can get essential fatty acids in generous amounts is through nutritional supplementation. Get yourself on the ultimate EFAs, get yourself on the essential fatty acids. If you're gonna pick, if you're gonna pick one, two products to get, get the ultimate classic and get the essential fatty acids. 
That's how fundamental essential fats, and, and you can tell how deficient you are in essential fats by how much you crave fatty food. Fatty food craving is your body's cry for essential fatty acids. Now, if you don't believe me, and you should all be, you should all be hippies here, you all should want to be skeptical, okay? Go get yourself a bunch of essential fatty acids, go get some ultimate EFAs, and swallow 30 pills. It won't hurt you, it'll be good for you. 30 of them, all right? And then see if any fatty food tastes good to you after that. Think about, think if french fries will sound good to you after that, they won't. Because once you've reached a certain amount of fat, chemistry will be triggered in your brain that will shut down fat drives. And this is why, this is how you want to diet. You don't want to struggle. Look, I have, I hate willpower. I have none, zero. Zero willpower, you shouldn't need willpower. Willpower is like there's a battle going on, right? There's this fight, oh, I have to have it. No, I can't, oh my God, I gotta have, no, I can't. Yeah, that's not a good situation. You wanna hit your brain's satiety centers. You wanna hit your brain's turn off centers. When you eat protein, you hit the, your brain's energy turn off center so it doesn't need any more energizing and you won't want sugar anymore. That's one of the best ways to get off sugar is eat more protein. How many of you have experienced this? Okay. Everybody, try it. Eat. This, this is shown experimentally. When animals have enough protein, they don't eat sugar. You hit your brain's satiety center. Fats are the same way. You take essential fatty acids, you won't crave french fries. You won't crave ice cream. You won't crave buttery, uh, not that there's anything wrong with butter, by the way. You won't crave the fatty foods that you usually crave. The point is, is that you don't need willpower. One of the most common things people say when they get on the Beyond Tang Tangerine, which as you know is my favorite product, my favorite longevity product, okay? I mean, everybody's got their favorites, that's my favorite. My favorite thing about it is people lose weight without even trying. I hear this all the time. I didn't even try to lose weight, I just wasn't hungry, I just didn't need to eat because once your body has enough nutrients, it's not gonna go send you out on a one point hunt for food, which is what most of us live like, right? On a one pointed hunt for food, because our bodies aren't really looking for food. They're looking for nutrition. Our bodies are sending us out for nutrients. Once you get enough protein, you're not gonna crave sugar, and that means bread and pasta and cereal, by the way. And once you get enough of fat, essential fatty acids, you won't crave fat. The fourth of, our, of, the, fourth of the macronutrients is a fiber. Grind your own, make your own fiber, get a Vitamix, make vegetable juice, vegetable soup, grind flax seeds, eat veggies, get Fiber, you want about four tablespoons a day, uh, anywhere from two to four tablespoons a day. The, big, the bigger the stools, the smaller the hospitals. <laughs> I didn't make that up, that's a famous nutritional saying. I did not make that up. We're all adults here. You know, big, you want them big, shaped like your intestine, right? That's how you want them. And it's one, of the, it's one of the first things you'll notice once you start to get enough fiber. And then water. Water is extremely important for several reasons that we don't talk about. Number one, the chemistry in your body happens in a milieu of water. Water is a, a matrix for all the chemistry to have to happen in your body. Uh, water is also important for diluting blood sugar. For diabetics, or for pre-diabetics, and we're all pre-diabetic, water helps dilute blood sugar. If you're diabetic, first thing in the morning is amazing. Then you come to the micronutrients, and this is where supplementation becomes so important because we have done such a number on our food, on our food chain, from the soil on upwards, that you cannot get what you need from the foods. And I wish you could. I wish you could. This is where Dr. Wallach, God love him, he was one of the first guys to notice it. How are we doing for time here, by the way? I want to take some questions. So, are, are, are we okay for time? What time you got? Anybody got to help me out? Oh, it's a clock up there. Okay, good. Okay, this is where Dr. Wallach, this is, was Dr. Wallach's genius is he knew that in his background as an animal person, as a vet working with animals, he knew that there were nutritional deficiency diseases that were occurring in animals that had analogs in people, that had analogs in people, that people had versions of. So that people had versions, uh, animals had versions of nerve diseases, animals had versions of, uh, of bone diseases that we have. And he knew in the animal world they gave them nutrients. What is it that the animals were getting that we're not getting in our food? Nutrients. We're not getting nutrients in our food because processing foods, uh, uh, unprocessed foods, are the enemy of the food chain. Businesses need food that lasts. Yeah, have you guys noticed that there's no sprouts around? That you can't get sprouts in Whole Foods anymore? Do you, anybody notice this? You can't get sprouts in Whole Foods? Nobody's noticed? You don't eat sprouts? 
Yep. Sprouts are amazing, amazing. But you can't get them anymore. They're not in restaurants, they're not in Whole Foods. You know why? They're hard to find. Still, you get them here? Maybe because they're fresh. In Colorado, we can't get them. Whole Foods stopped carrying them. Because sprouts are so loaded, they're so packed with nutritional value that everything likes them. Yeast like them, and bacteria like them, and funguses like them, and they don't last. They're perishable. Any time a food is valuable, it's perishable. Any time a food is valuable, it's perishable. It dies. Because value is proportional or is, is directly proportional to energy. So anytime something is a high energy system that's a valuable nutritional food, it can die easily. It can break down easily, and the best foods don't last. In the Bible, in the Bible, they said, we'll get you the manna every day. Don't worry about it. Now, what the Jews didn't know that, they kept on. Yeah, what happened to it? What happened to the manna? It got bad. It got rotten. It got wormy. That's the lesson is the good stuff is perishable. The good stuff has to be fresh. And, but we, don't have, we have a food chain, a food distribution system that is the antithesis of that. That, that can't, it, it can't make money on food that, doesn't, that dies. It can't store it. It can't ship it. It can't keep it on the shelves. So they depend on food that is dead, which is why you don't want to participate in that kind of food. It's dead food. And I wish we could get everything we needed from the four food groups. I wish. I wish we lived in the Garden of Eden. I don't even like that I have to supplement, but you got to supplement if you're going to have access to these kinds of nutrients to the degree that you do, that you need to. to the, in the density that you need to. In the nutritional density that you need to. And this is why supplementation is so important. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is like, it's not even a vitamin. It's like the difference between between, it's like orders of magnitude different from every other vitamin. Vitamin C and then all the other vitamins. It's like the god of vitamins. It's the Babe Ruth of vitamins. It shouldn't even be called a vitamin. Other animals make vitamin C. Vitamin C is a fundamental biochemical in the animal kingdom. Animals make it. Human beings, gorillas, and a kind of guinea pig are the only animals in the entire animal kingdom that doesn't make it. Vitamin C is hard to get in food. You, if you get an orange, you get 30 milligrams of vitamin C. The highest concentrations of vitamin C are chili peppers. They're like 300 milligrams. You'd have to eat like six chili peppers. Vitamin C is so not to get a day supply, not non-toxic. Vitamin C is so non-toxic, you can inject huge amounts right in your blood, directly in an injection. That's how non-toxic it is. But it's not in foods, which is why you have to make sure you're getting it in a supplemental fashion. Vitamin C is water-soluble. Meaning, it dissolves in water. Meaning, if you're using vitamin C, use your vitamin C in a liquid. Get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Get on the Tangy Tangerine. These are liquid vitamin C products. Get on liquid B vitamins. Same deal. Your B vitamins are liquid vitamins. And like vitamin C, they're flushed out of your system throughout the day. So, Drink your Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. Sip on it all day long. Give your body a steady state in, uh, input, like an IV drip of the B complex and vitamin C. This is the beauty of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Classic and these liquid nutrients. You can give yourself a steady state drip of nutrition throughout the day. This is why people lose weight on these things. This is why they're not as hungry on the, when you start taking the Beyond Tangy and the liquid nutrients. This is why you're not as hungry. It's not magic. You're just not as hungry because your body is getting the right nutrients. Ask people who've done it. And by the way, if you have any kind of diarrhea or loose stools when you use Beyond Tangy, you're not sipping on it long enough. You're trying to saturate your body with too much. That's why you want to sip on it. Give your body just the amount it needs. Don't overload the transport and absorption systems. The fat-soluble vitamins are a bit trickier because fats are harder for the body to absorb. One of the biggest problems we have as a culture is malabsorption of fats. When I said the body breaks down at the digestive system level, I wasn't talking as much about the water as I'm talking about the fats. You know there's 750,000 people lose their gallbladders every year. 750,000. Now, are you going to tell me that there's nearly a million people with messed up gallbladders? Are you going to tell me that they all needed their gallbladders taken out? Did you guys ever see... How many of you guys watched Bugs Bunny when you were kids? Bugs Bunny cartoons? You ever see the one where they're on the... 
uh, it's Bugs Bunny. I think it's Bugs Bunny. He's on the sh he's uh, shipwrecked, or he's on a, a boat with a sailor, and and they're both shipwrecked in the middle of the in the middle of the ocean on this little rowboat. And the sailor keeps looking at Bugs Bunny. He's got like fork and knife, and he's seeing Bugs Bunny like, like he's a hamburger or something. Did you ever see that?